Day one, food. Yay! Let's have a look at the food. <laughs> this is our lunch. And they forgot us because we did an early check-in. Gutom na kaya kay ko. And then, hapit na galauna. Nanawag na lang ko sa receptionist if naaba may pagkaon or wala. Ah, okay. This is fries. Tape and tape and more tape. Lagi. <laughs> You've got nail clippers right there. Yeah, it's okay. I'll do it by hand. The struggle is real. Gutom na ka. Wa na kay kusog. Pinakuan ba? Pinastrong. Wow. Steve uh, Rice. One meal? Yeah. I thought we were supposed to get two meals. And we paid for two. Two, one, two. What, rice and rice and that's no, it? No, wait, relax. What? Rice and rice? Wow. Tinulang oh. manok. <laughs> you like broth. that? Chicken broth. Hello, allergy. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Okay. I just eat this. This okay. is good. Day one. It's rock and roll. She's a happy camper. I'm hungry. Hangry. <laughs> She's hangry. Okay. So we've we've already had our our nap because we got here to the hotel about four o'clock, four fifteen, somewhere in there, AM. And um, I got about seven hours of sleep. Lynn got off and on sleep all night long. She couldn't figure out how to recline her chair. And uh, so she got a little bit tired there. Uh, anyway, so we had a about a three, three and a half hour sleep, and it was a good sound sleep. So now we got to power through till about seven, eight o'clock minimum uh, to get used to this uh, uh, eight hour time off, uh, time difference between the time zones. Okay, there we go. We will keep touching in with you on the day one, and later, later in this video, we're going to update you on the process, what seems to be lingering from previous uh, uh, entry protocols uh, that are no longer needed anymore. So grab a cup of coffee and let's jump to it. Lynn, help! I got a poop. Be right back. Okay, so let's give you a summary of what it took to get through the airport. And it all started in Vancouver. Philippine Airlines had a representative there for of the airline or, or of One Health, I'm not sure. Um, I think the airline. Anyway, they went through the line and my guess is that about 50% didn't have everything that they needed in order to get through. Um, some people said they booked a seven day hotel because the swab was going to take seven days. And maybe they paid for the rapid turnaround of the, um, of the swab, which you can get one in the same day. Okay. Um, but that doesn't preclude you from still doing your nine nights and 10 days in a uh, quarantine facility. Uh, of your choosing hotel <laughs> um, so the rules are simple um, nine nights ten days in a hotel um, swabbing on the seventh day um, uh, and yeah so yeah that's really about it um, there's one piece of paper that we thought Philippine Airlines was going to ask for, people were filling it in left, right and center. Um, as it turns out, by the time we got to the gate, nobody wanted it and they were just piling them up in a corner. Um, some people were just handing them, some people just said, do we need it? And they said no and they just kept walking as we did. Um, okay, so that was in the line. So other than helping a few people, we got through there fairly quickly. Uh, got into the gate, um, got through the gate process, 
they said that they were going to require that we do the scanning of our passport and we do the scanning of our um, boarding pass. That didn't happen. It was regular, regular all the way through. Um, got onto the airline. Um, and that was it. So now, from the One Health standpoint, other than the checking in the line, there was no scanning at the at the desk, right? It was just a regular line up and go right through. Okay, so pitter patter. Thirteen hours later, we're landing in Manila, and in Manila. Little side note on the shields. I'd strongly suggest you get the headband type, with the very flexible weak shield okay uh, a lot of guys seem to have the sunglasses type and that's all cool and everything if you're just walking around um, but I did hear more than a few times the stewardess asking the person to put the shield back on and uh, you know they can't because when the head moves and everything the sunglasses are there and there or the the shield is uh, flexible and it's pushing up against the side of the face and you know makes it very uncomfortable so Go out and pay that $1.99 or that $4.99 and just get the cheap, cheap headband style. In Manila, um, had a representative from the Coast Guard come on to the plane, uh, made an announcement saying that the One Health Pass must be completed or we have a desk that can help you. Um, we were lucky we got sort of off the plane rather quickly and so we weren't caught in that that queuing of of uh, sitting in chairs waiting for your turn to to go up um, which could have caused a lot of delays um, if the person in front of us didn't have the blood health pass done because then they were going to have to walk them through it now if you don't get have a sim and you want a sim card the very first after you've done your very first health watch or health uh, one Health Pass scan. For us, there was a, a, a booth immediately that was selling SIM cards. Because we arrived so early in the morning, there was no attendance outside. Okay, so the one that's upstairs in the terminal appeared to be Globe. We got a SIM and out we went. Um, I think we were scanned to three times upstairs. Yeah. Um, I'm going to assume that that was Coast Guard, Immigration, and... Two um, only. Oh. Two only upstairs. And then we went into the guy with a uniform, went down into the Immigration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The immigration three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was all together three. Um, and that was it. So... Uh, the, judging by the other uh, videos that are out there, uh, looks like they're streamlining it more and more and more. Um, uh, like I say, other than people just not getting their homework done before they leave, uh, we got an email from, um, was it from Philippine Detox Airlines? Detoxicare. Detoxicare. We got one from them because we did the One Health scanning. They were not collecting any money at the airport, although one of the booths said fees. And so we weren't collected, but it, I, I assume that you could have paid there if you wanted to pay in cash. If, no, oh. You could prepay online after you take right. the step two of One Health Pass. Right. Like what we did. What we did, yeah. And then that's the first, that's the first choice. And second choice is pay on the seventh day here right. during the test. That's right. Um, now we got another email from Detoxicare saying that uh, here's your reservation number, da 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 da, and and later in the email it said if you've already paid, don't worry about it because here's your number. Okay, um, so we will follow up with them in a couple of days here, maybe tomorrow, who knows? Um, got lots of <laughs> lots to do. <laughs> No place to go, but lots to do. Um, so we may get that done tomorrow. Um, but as far as the overall process, uh, we saw lots of hotels already lined up outside. So if you're looking at using their transport to get you to and from the hotel, um, no worries from our perspective. 
uh, on seeing various hotels out there already um, ready to pick up passengers. I think because they've just run into so many people that don't have SIM cards. A lot of people have been away for 18 months and their SIM cards have died. So, uh, and they're not valid. When you go into the airport, international airports are supposed to have Wi-Fi. They have it there, but you have to have an active SIM to use that as your registration to get free um, internet so that they can send you text messages and, and, and market to you, right? It makes sense, but in an airport, goodness sakes, it's got to be free, open air Wi-Fi, no strings attached so that you can do these fundamentals, um, which is what an airport is supposed to be there for. You're supposed to be able to, you know, uh, contact this and that and so on and so forth, right? Um, the fact that there was only one operational SIM outlet at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, all the other ones were outside, um, but that was the only operational one. So that entire 777 uh, didn't have the ability to do anything other than hope and pray that, uh, 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 you know, that their driver was going to be outside. Otherwise, they were going to have to forego that and take a taxi. Um, we heard from one other person in the line that they had already flown back back in August and that all of the rates for the taxis are fixed. So not to worry too much about that. Um, the, the driver in our case was very good, stopped at a 7-Eleven, sounded like it's very standard protocol. Various people in the lineup saying that the drivers were all quite willing to stop. Um, and we got a total of 10, yeah, 20, 20 liters of water, um, which, you know, when, when you're going to a different city, you gotta be careful about the water. Okay, so anyway, but a good first meal. Um, we did take a whack of food. I took nine packs of bacon pre-cooked and about uh, maybe s uh, 12 sausages uh, pre-cooked and then hoping to get the veg when we're here. Those, because of the fat in them and stuff, they're not gonna go bad. We did freeze them. We did put them in a cooler pack they were still cold when we got here, and that was probably about 36 to 40 hours um, outside of a refrigerator, right? So anyway, there you go. There's our rundown. We'll keep updating you and showing you some food as we did earlier, and we'll let you know how it goes. Um, don't know what else to add at this point, but we'll keep you updated. Talk to you soon.